Round two action. Here we go, De Silva Martinez. I think we're all in agreement that De Silva won that first round. Martinez looking to get aggressive, come out. Yeah, keep distance. Uh, you know, I think his striking is, is probably better. Uh, although, if he ducks into a kick like that, it won't seem that way. Yeah, uh, Formula's had four kickboxing fights, and uh, he's won them all. So after uh, he's like, he realized that to step his game up, you know, he needs to, to work his hands more and, you know, nothing. Can't just use the grappling. No, not at all. That's his forte, but he's trying to he's trying to get his striking where his grappling's at. Martinez working the body there. Just suited Silva very, very calm, very focused. Again, working that kick. He snaps that out there. I don't know if, this, if Martinez really fears the hands more so uh, than the kicks. Yeah, you know, I, you just wonder if maybe Jasir De Silva is waiting to time a shot. I mean, I'm sure he's probably expecting Danny Martinez to shoot in on him, but, you know, Martinez may be better served to kind of stand here and trade a little bit. I think Danny wants to keep on his feet. Um, one disadvantage that he has is because uh is just so good on the ground that he might be anticipating the takedown too much, and he's not letting his hands go where, as he should, you know? It's the Silva that actually shoots him. We saw the defensive sprawl there. I think you're right. I think Martinez does just want to stay up. I mean, even with your uh, your, your wrestling base, being on top of, of De Silva is still dangerous. Well, you know, you're talking about being on top of a world champion grappler, you know. I don't know if, if, if that would be his game, exact game plan. I think he has to be the better wrestler, keep him on the feet, you know, and make him come to you and make him push the fight and just out-wrestle him. But. And I've talked about in other fights how guys need to throw more shorter punches, but I think in this particular instance, Martinez would be better off throwing a kind of a looping punch. Because if you look at right there. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, you know, just you said, it, it was it was the right punching combination, but the Silva alertly got the fight to the ground. That's the problem when you throw, when you throw too many straight rights or, or left hooks, that the guy can lower his level. That's why I'm more of a fan of throwing jab and straight uppercuts. So if the guy does lower his level, you hit him with uppercut. If he doesn't land clean, you get your own hook right away. You know, if you throw that hook and you're off balance, now nah, the guy just takes you down. Gets underneath you and he's got your body tied up. Exactly. Jasir De Silva in side control. Obviously not where Martinez wants to be. Look at the speed of the transition there. World class level. That right is world class stuff. Got the back, got both hooks in. That is impressive stuff. Back to a familiar territory and not where Martinez wants to be. Silva both hooks in. Let's see what Martinez wants to do. Again, he defended the wrist very well last time. You know, I guess if there's any criticism of De Silva, even as people who rank him as the number one flyweight, it is that he does have a lot of decision victories. He hasn't gotten the finish quite as often as he needs to. But, I mean, he's in great position here. He's certainly working for it. It's not as if he's stalling out on top. Right. Well, I mean, he's, I think half of his wins are by decision. But look at the guys he's fought. You know, some of those guys, they don't get put away. It's hard. You can't finish everybody as much as you try. Some guys are just tough. These are guys you can't finish. What's the advantage there as he's on the back there of reaching around and grabbing that leg? Is that just a defensive uh, technique? It's so he won't roll over so much. Because, um, like you said, he, he's so high off the back that he can get bucked. But he grabbed that leg, it, it, it controls him. And if he does get rolled over, he can hit an E-bar off that if, if Danny pops all the way up. And he showed he, he can stand up and he can just kind of run the clock out. Yeah. But if you keep him bent over, that's an awkward position and it takes more strength out of you. And it's, it's very uncomfortable. And it's frustrating, you know. It, I mean, besides being uncomfortable, it, eventually you're like, man, like, he's not, he's beating me, but he's not beating me, you know. Like, I'm not taking a pounding, I'm just. You're like, not getting hurt, you're just absolutely getting dominated positionally. Right, yeah. But if you make one mistake, you got to believe De Silva's going to capitalize on it immediately. And he's, Def definitely. He, he's doing a good job of not making those mistakes, but not in a good spot. Slid down a little bit, adjusted his grip. De Silva again on the back, a little bit less than a minute. And you're right, you know, I think Martinez maybe should try Just lean back, you know. Try, fall back. Yeah, try for one of those slams, like kind of elevate yourself back and uh, see if you can. It, it, it's kind of a lucky shot if you happen to hit De Silva's head just right. but It has worked. Yeah, you're not going to create much luck from there. Staying tied up against the cage. The only thing if he's a fall back, he has to make sure he falls back, tuck in his chin, he falls back, and his hands go out. His neck comes up, and he chokes. You know? That's a choke, yeah, definitely. But you don't think like you're like, oh, I'm just going to, you know. Like, when you're in there, you're like, I'm just going to fall back, and if it works, it works. But sometimes, like, that, you know. It can't be a controlled, slow fall back. It has to be almost <laughs> where you 
it's got to be violent. Throw yeah, your feet up in the air. And yeah. if, it, if it's violent, your, your chin might come up, you know, and you, you might get choked with the downside. But it has worked before, like we said earlier. The silver left score the body lock and just finishes again in a dominant position. Like you said, I think that's got to be frustrating more yeah. than anything for Martinez. He's not hurt. He's not hurt. He's not tired. He's just getting out of position, you know, and getting yep. controlled. And beautiful fight, by, you know, by Formiga. You know, not taking nothing away from him. You know, he's doing what he has to do, you know. Very much so. We could take the last minute of both rounds and it'll look identical. Okay. And that's because he's, he's caught Danny's rhythm. Danny's doing something that he's always giving his back up. I see right there. Yeah, the looping punches are right, but again, as, as Ulysses said, he got a little too a little too crazy with it, and De Silva changed levels and got the takedown. But I think you're right. You know, maybe just a jab and, and one or two of those could do good because I, I do think those are his, his best opportunities. He's hitting those wide hooks, and some of those are landing a little bit. I think that's his best spot to try and win this fight. That's the, the moment where he can actually hurt this guy, and he's got to throw it Joe Frazier-esque. He's got to be with the shoulders, and you got to keep it a, a, a little hunch. You know, come up with it. That's what the power is. He has to know he's down 2-0. You know, so this yeah. round is like. It's do or die, right? Do or die. If you get take it down, you got to get back up. You can't right. give your back up. You got to get back up. And again, it's like we talked to, you know, one of the earlier fights today. Somebody was working a closed guard late in the third round. Did you know, if he gets to that position again with the silver on his back, he's got to do something different. And there was a right hand that landed. Nice now he's throwing throw. uppercuts, though, you know. He's throwing his uppercuts, which is it's, it's forcing him to, to retreat off those takedowns. It looks like wrestling practice. Look at him sprawling out, throwing, throwing punches. That's like you drill in the gym at the Silva with a nice knee inside. That's what Martinez has got to do. I like the way this third round is unfolding. Yeah, he's got to come in. He's got to be aggressive. I think now they're both a little slippery. It's not, it's not going to be able to get dominated as much by De Silva. Like in the first round when they were dry, he was able to grab onto him and pretty much pose his will. Shot again. He's not gonna. Get, he's not gonna get that. No, he needs to set that shot up a little bit better than just yep. that. It, that shot works if he's in, uh, if Danny's lunging with that hook. But when he's just sitting there and not throwing anything, it's not gonna work out that great. Just one minute into the third and final round here, Martinez got to be down two rounds to none. You imagine? Big he's elbow. working on top. Yeah, big elbow on top. And you got to wonder if Martinez wants to be here. Like you said, you're on top of a world-class grappler. So do you want to be here and try to cut him open, try to get a TKO, or do you want to get back to the feet? I mean, you want to be here if this is the first, second round to win the round. But if you, you've got to stop him, I don't know if this is the, great posi the best position for him, you know? He's going to start pivoting for the armbar right here. But, you know, what? give the silver credit, too, because he's controlling the arms very well. Got some blood. We got to cut. Tight. Isn't the blood coming from Danny, though? Isn't it from the knee? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Good elbow. elbow over the top. Good elbow. Now, if you're working a closed guard, you're keeping him tight. So he's keeping Martinez weight. It's not like Martinez can turn around and and uh, you know try to break that guard because he'll get, he'll get arm barred real quick. See, and the, the good thing is he trains with uh, Dominic Cruz, best 135 pounder in the world. But Dominic doesn't have the style that Formiga does. He's not going to try taking you down. He's going to try not getting taken down. So even though you're going with one of the best guys in the world at a higher weight class, it's going to help you. But you got to find guys that are mimic the guy you're going to fight. But he's having his most effective round here, Martinez. He really is. But at this point, I say you back away. I mean, even if he wins a round, he's still down 2-1. to one. He needs to finish the fight. That's exactly. in my eyes. Exactly. And there he does. He does back away. No reason to go back in the top position. Silva takes a quick look at his corner. Oh, nice leaping knee, but gave up the position. A little too risky, I think. But, hey, he you defended got, well. You got to go for broke, though, you know? True. That one almost cost him, but, hey, I like to see it. He's trying to finish, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And the Silva was almost going into, oh, I'm just going to hold on mode. Which is what I said earlier. When you, when you consider yourself the best in the world, you don't have that mentality. You want to finish the fight no matter first, second, or third round. Yeah, he's got a real patient jujitsu style, almost kind of a like, like a gi style, you know, very patient in it. And, you know, when you got these five-minute rounds, uh, sometimes you got to explode. So, you know, credit to Martinez for surviving. If he can do something amazing here. That was an amazing takedown right there. It really was. That was beautiful. But he needs to get back to his feet. He just he, he can't sit there. He needs to work. You know, Danny needs to fight for that, get to his knees, fight for that single leg. But every time he does, Formiga jumps on his back. See him trying to, he's trying to get to his knees, trying to spin around. The silver doing a good job of 
Danny had two options. If he if he lays on his back, he's gonna get caught on side control, just like he did. Right. If he was to go to his knees, Formiga's gonna spin to his back. Pick your poison, right? Yeah, and I think he did the right one by giving him side control because you can, like there, roll out. Beautiful when not, roll. When he's on your back, it's hard, you know? Nice Try to get that choke from the top. Oh, there's the back again. It. That yeah. was beautiful. Another beautiful transition to the back. Just slick nice. stuff there. Martinez might have made a mistake, I think, by going for that choke versus maybe just trying to get back to his feet. Yeah, that, was, that was definitely a nice transition. De Silva is so fast with his spins and his transitions. And again, he's right in this back position. And see, if you look at this fight compared to the other fight, he's not rushing that position. He's taking his time. You know, he's like, he knows that he's the one of the best, probably, in my opinion, the best position in a fight. You right. got the guy's back. He can't see you punch him, all that good stuff, you know? Again, we talked about the frustration. Martinez is right back, super frustrated right now. After all of that, here I am, right back where I ended every round with this guy wrapped around me on my back. Very fighting off a, Fighting off a choke. Danny, you have to finish, though, man. I mean, I think for me, because of my decision right here, but. Look at these Danny's guys done. literally standing on their head. Amazing stuff there for Miga, keeping in the body locks, trying to still trying to go for that choke in the final 10 seconds. Martinez is trying to defend it as he has been for almost this entire fight. And you know what? Game effort by Danny Martinez. Uh, give him credit. You know, in his first fight at 125 pounds, I like him in the division. I want to see more from him. No doubt. And credit to him, but to Silva obviously walking away with the victory tonight. And, uh, you know, positional dominance throughout, amazingly quick transitions. You make one mistake, and this guy capitalizes on it. And props to Martinez for defending throughout. He never got choked. Uh, he never got in too deep. Yeah, well, he, we watched the reaction here in the third round. I want to see that takedown, uh, the takedown again and that back control, because that was beautiful. There's a kick right there. Just missed it. Inches away. Inches away. And we see, uh, you know, De Silva. Was, I, I thought at that point De Silva was really going to be able to capitalize on the position, but Martinez, to his credit, did scramble away after the gamble. So Martinez getting tended to, the nose a little bloodied up there. You know, Martinez, you know, had some good moments. The looping punches on the feet were doing well. He had some good elbows from the top. Uh, and, and you know what? Did, did a good job. I mean, a, respect, a respectful showing for Danny Martinez. Especially against the number one ranked guy in the world, you know. and Outside Sherlock's of Ulysses ranking, Gomez. Outside of me. You know, outside of my, <laughs> my own eyes. You know, a lot of people, Sherlock has him. A lot of people have him as the number one ranked guy in the world, you know. And, you know, he put up a good fight, you know. I thought he was winning the third round until the very end. You know, you could still give him a good I was going to say, you could probably, 29-28 wouldn't be unreasonable here, right? Here's Martinez what you're did a talking about. Yeah, you know, 29-29 wouldn't, wouldn't be unreasonable. Still Here's the movements right here that you were impressed with, how quick these guys were. Yeah, the transitions were absolutely amazing from De Silva. I mean, you talk about elite, world-class jiu-jitsu, that's it right there. You know what I would like to see for De Silva? I'd like to see this guy actually have a fight and not have to worry about financing. Let's get the official uh, a decision from our ring announcer, Mr. Uh, Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards, and all three judges scored the same 29 to 28 yep. for your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Juicy De Silva!